Hello everyone, and welcome to another PlaySki development update. It's Thursday, April the 2nd, 2015. Uh, for those just joining us, PlaySki is an ASCII art tool game engine thing that I'm working on as part of my first independent game development project. And I've got a cool demo of uh, the past month's progress all lined up for you here, so I'm just going to jump right in. Um, so yeah, you all might have seen me posting some of this on Twitter. Uh, it's This is really just a test scene, first of all. My game is not a weird ASCII-fied version of Chrono Trigger. But I realized that uh, rather than simultaneously try to do this tech stuff and look dev on my game, I would just take something from... I would just take some assets and stuff from another game. Um, and so, yeah, like, a lot of stuff going on here. Like, you may wonder, this doesn't look like an art tool. Well, this is PlaySki running in game mode. I did a demo of this earlier, where I showed, like, a character moving around with different objects and a backdrop and stuff like that. And this is just kind of a more developed version of it. Um, so, yeah. And... These assets are converted using a feature that's new in PlaySki 0.5.0, which uh, is up on Bitbucket and Itch.io. So if you want to check this out, then you can absolutely just download this build. I'm not distributing this this uh, this weird converted Chrono Trigger stuff, just because like even though it is just a bunch of characters and colors, like I don't want to you know provoke Square Enix whoever's ire or anything. Um, I can, if people are interested enough, I can like offer this sample content as a separate distributable. It's basically, um, yeah, let's jump out of game mode here. So yeah, now we're back in the editor thing, and I added this feature as a little convenience thing. Open all game mode assets. Boom. And so now we're in edit mode, and we can paint all this stuff. You know, we can be like, hey, cool, we got these things. And when we switch back into game mode we're dealing with a fully editable representation of that. Uh, and this is on layer 2, so it's drawing in front of the character because scenes can have multiple things going on. Things can, uh, scenes can have, like, uh, pieces of art can have multiple layers. So that's cool. And yeah, see, now it's running on the floor. Um, so yeah, like, this, this conversion of like the bedroom in Chrono Trigger got some attention on Twitter when I posted it a few days ago and then these are some converted still frames and animations so that's in that's that's the move animation and oh no um, these are the different like stand forward back left uh, right and then I flip right for the left um, but this was done through the new ASCII conversion thing and I wanted to show that off, give that thing kind of its own little demo here. Um, yeah, so we can convert anything. You can say, hey, let's convert this image here. And then it resizes the image properly. I hope this isn't killing my video recording and encoding. If this, if I sound weird or I'm moving at like a couple of frames per second, that's why. But anyway, it's converting this raster image into it resized it and then dithered it down to the target palette, which in this case is the Commodore 64 palette. And then it's going in block by block. As you can see, like it's converting this stuff, so it's very slow. Like there are some uh, there are some other raster to ASCII conversion things that move like really quickly. Like VLC uses, I think, a library called libkaka that can basically do 30 frames per second. So the result looks a lot worse. And by worse, I mean it's like less accurate. Um, there's this other library that called it morphological accuracy, which is kind of on point because, like, it's actually mimicking the shape. It's doing, like, bl comparisons within a single block. Uh, I guess for this to be meaningful, I should probably open up the, the source image. But um, but anyway, it goes through and it converts block by block and finds the absolute best color, color and character combination that it can, and then just writes that, and now you have a fully editable piece of artwork. Um, that you can do stuff to, you know, I can be like, hey, I'm painting, let me grab this character, and now I'm going to grab this character and paint it around and stuff. So yeah, and I just did that to uh, the Chrono Trigger scene here. One of the reasons that it looks so good is that it's using the source palette. So the actual, like, screen grab that I took from the game, it's using a palette that you can see here is, like, these are the actual colors that were in that original 
in the original screenshot. And I added like this little feature that's like palette from file, where it's like, give me a file, and then take the best 256 or 64 or 16 colors from that, and then use that palette. And so together with the ASCII conversion, you can have something that ends up looking pretty good. So yeah, and that's what I did on Chrono standing and running and all that. Um, another thing you'll notice for this was uh, I made my own... I started making my own character set, and if you're hep to retro computing character sets, you'll notice that this is very heavily based off of, uh, off of the Commodore 64 set Petski. Um, but it also includes all these weird characters like a curved round thing and stuff like that. So I was really just kind of trying to build an ultimate character set that would have like all of the stuff that I wanted. It's got like these diagonal like half tile pieces that are really useful for making different shapes. So this may be what I actually make my game with. And then it also, I wanted to steal like the little smiley faces from DOS, ASCII, and like have a musical note and you know some of these other type symbols that I think will be useful when I'm developing the look of my own game which will not look like a Chrono Trigger uh, but it should it will hopefully be pretty cool looking and yeah so yes um, what else is new uh, yeah with these animation things uh, I added I was like yeah man it, it I it sure is difficult making animations when you can't see the previous frame or the next frame, you know. This is also especially abstract looking. Like, this is a sprite character that's been converted into ASCII in, by this weird process. So, like, this is going to be more abstract looking than a character. It's cool looking, but it's going to be more abstract than a character in my game. Um, but yeah, I added onion skinning, and so I added some options here. You can toggle it on and off, and you can say, show me only the next and previous frame, show me only the next frame, and then you can set, like, how many characters or how many characters ahead and behind you it's doing. It's a little clearer here with my old, old, old from piece of test art here, where I'm looking at the frames bef before and after the current one. And I can say, only show me the first, the, the next two frames, one frame or two frames. And then only show me the frames ahead, or only show, only show me the frames behind. So yeah, uh, I think this is going, this is a huge step. I was originally planning to build some, like, kind of an animation timeline kind of thing with little thumbnails of each frame. That might still be useful to me, but I didn't, like, I don't want to commit to doing that much to that big new piece of UI if I don't have to. So I'll do it like in response to a clear need, but I might not need to cuz onion skinning really does. It's the bee's knees. It's definitely it definitely will help me get off the ground animation wise. Um yeah, what else? So yeah, we hit image conversion and this game mode stuff. Oh yeah, also like I'm using uh I need to make game mode have its own camera so that it doesn't reset when you go in and out of edit mode. I'm also you can't see my yeah, I'm using I'm using uh, a 360 controller here. There we go. Um, yeah, just I just wanted to get SDL2's like input handling stuff working, and like this is very basic, but it's detecting a controller and talking to it and all that, so that's cool. Um, lastly, probably yeah, this is probably the end. Um, I wanted to show I added all of my Patreon patrons who have submitted their names to be in the credits screen for PlaySkey so far. So I got them in, and I got some programming help thanks, and some tool design inspiration, and then like personal thanks. And so yeah, all these folks right here have helped me make this possible, have helped make it possible for me to keep working on this and work on my own, work on my game. So if you're interested in this kind of thing and you want to support it, then please consider supporting my Patreon. And for folks who have already done this, whether or not you're on this list, uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, yeah. So yeah, this path, like I haven't done a video in a while. Uh, part of that reason is I was off uh, doing contract work for two weeks. Um, and then I've got another two weeks coming up in a few days, and then I'll be done with it. But that was something that just kind of, I can't really talk about it. Maybe you'll, maybe you'll hear about it someday. Um, but that was just some well-paying contract work with cool people that just kind of fell into my lap, and I looked at how much it would extend uh, my development runway here, uh, and it was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's hard to pass up. So I did that. 
Um, I didn't get a whole lot done on PlaySki while during those two weeks, uh, but I worked on the image conversion stuff, which then, like, towards the end of that time, bore fruit very nicely. So, you know, I got some stuff done, and uh, this game, this game mode stuff really is a huge, really is a huge, like, morale booster for me. Um, not that my morale was poor before, but just, uh, like, you know, this, this feels like a game now. Um, one thing you may notice here is that, like, yeah, the illusion will break, so, and, you know, I can, like, run behind stuff in here. So there's no collision detection in the world. And that is probably, I think there's two things I'm going to work on next. There is, um, I'm going to work on, I'm going to, I'm going to work on collision detection code, uh, which will be tile-based. So, the, like, this character's running around and it has a grid of tiles, much like everything in this world. And you're going to collide with those things and you're going to collide with walls and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I need to do something about sorting as well. You know, so like being able to say, okay, when you're behind this thing, you draw behind it. But then when your when your Y is lower than it, stuff like that. Uh, and then the other thing that I need to that I that I think I am finally unblocked to do now is look development on my own on my on my game project on my still secret game project. And that's going to involve like doing a bunch of artwork. Uh, None of which I'm really planning to post on Twitter. I might post a little bit for uh, my the Patreon backer tier that uh, includes Im inside early information about the new project. But even there, I kind of want to be judicious about about what it is, uh, just because it'll be a cooler surprise when I finally start talking about it and reveal it and stuff. So, yeah, but doing, like, art, doing some test art, environment art, and character art, and character animation, so that I can basically get an equivalent of this thing right here going, uh, but with my own assets, rather than assets taken from a beloved game that people will retweet you if you post something cool with it, like I did. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, that's super exciting. Um... So yeah, I'm going to be doing collision detection and look dev, and then we will really be developing a video game, and that's super exciting. Uh, I've also got one little thing coming up that hopefully w you'll hear about eventually, but I'm doing an album cover for somebody with uh, with Playski. So that's exciting, and hopefully once that album comes out, uh, I'll show it off and talk about it and, and all that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you again, patrons. Let me bring you all back up here. Control G. Wait. Okay. Thank you again, patrons. <laughs> and uh, yeah, also yeah, if you'd like to be, if you if you already are already a patron of me and you'd like to be on the screen, then uh, I sent out a link to a Google spreadsheet list thing uh, with my last Patreon update, so you can check that out. Uh, but yeah, thank you again for supporting me and watching this, and I hope to have some more cool stuff to show you next time. And in the meantime, have a lovely evening.